Seven and Ten. My name is Carl Azus. Good Friday to you, and thank you for watching our show. Technology takes center stage today as we explore augmented and mixed reality. Pokemon Go is one example of augmented reality. It takes virtual digital characters and overlays them onto scenes from the real world. The technology company Microsoft is one maker of augmented reality systems, and it was recently awarded a contract to make a special version of these systems for the U.S. military. The deal could be worth almost $22 billion over 10 years, and it could provide more than 120,000 AR headsets to the Army's close combat force, which is trained for the extreme danger of fighting enemies within eyesight, person to person. The Army says the technology would help soldiers train to be more aware of their environments, better engage their targets, and make the decisions necessary to overcome current and future enemies. Some Microsoft employees have spoken out against providing these headsets to the military. They've said that doing so crosses a line into developing weapons, which they oppose. But the company's CEO says the organization would not withhold technology from institutions that protect the freedoms we enjoy. There are other applications for AR headsets. One is their use in mixed reality when you interact with actual physical items in front of you and the virtual graphics you see through the glasses. Critics say that increased use of these devices can make workers more dependent on technology and less on traditional know-how. Samuel Burke shows us how extensively the headsets combine these elements. Do you like my new look? Mixed reality has come a long way since Microsoft released the first HoloLens three years ago. Many consumers, though, will never have seen the changes leading up to the HoloLens 2. That's because these devices are focused on the workplace, not on homes. Its target is what HoloLens creator Alex Kitman calls first-line workers, those jobs in industries like healthcare and the military that require manual work but would benefit from visual aids. Take construction, for example. I'm going to be operating and fixing this thing? This machine. All right. Right in front of me is this huge blower. It pushes air through a wastewater system. And what these glasses are letting me do is look at what's happening inside of these gears. So I can have an idea of what I'll need to do when I'm operating and repairing this machine, but seeing everything first through the mixed reality system. So now it's showing me how the parts will come off of this gigantic gear in front of me. I would actually be doing this manually. Yep. So it would just be walking me through and showing me what to do, but I would be doing the actual work with my hand. It's three and a half thousand dollar price tag is geared to businesses rather than everyday consumers. That cost brings significant advances. One of the main criticisms of the HoloLens 1 was its limited field of view. The HoloLens 2 more than doubles it. It also has eye tracking sensors, increased resolution from the equivalent of 720 per eye to a massive 2K, and improved balance and weight. By targeting a much smaller, business-oriented audience, Microsoft has paved a path to bigger returns in mixed reality. 10 Second Trivia What was the first professional team in baseball history? Cincinnati Red Stockings, Philadelphia Athletics, Mutual of New York, or Louisville Grays? It was in 1969 that the Cincinnati Red Stockings became baseball's first pro team. It was in 1876 that the first opening day was held for the National League. That's according to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Over 3,000 people were said to have been in the stands. And the question yesterday as the Major League kicked off a new 162 game season was will fans be in the stands once again? Coy Wire has the answer. Last season's opening day, it was take my cardboard cutout to the ball game. Now, it's back to take me out to the ball game. Yeah, baby, here we go! Major League Baseball giving all 30 teams the go-ahead to host fans to start their seasons. But it won't be the same at every park. <laughs> New York's mayor is opening the doors to 20% capacity at Yankees and Mets home games, as is Chicago's mayor at the Cubs and White Sox parks. The LA Dodgers will also be at 20% capacity when they open defense of their World Series title. Regardless if there's 10 fans or 2,500 or 10, whatever it is, it's gonna be a special day um, for all of us. We probably, as players, didn't realize, you know, necessarily how, how much we appreciate having fans in stands until, you know, last year when there weren't any. Having any fans in stands makes it a, it a, it a more fun environment. 
And with Texas governor opening up his state, the Texas Rangers are wide open, up to 100% capacity for their home opener with masks. But starting on game two, that number will be reduced with social distancing. Okay. All good? Yeah, great. How you watch the game is going to be a lot different than you're used to. You'll have to be in masks and practice social distancing. You'll even be encouraged to buy those peanuts and cracker jacks on your phone. We're very excited to have uh, our fans back in the stadium and we appreciate their patience and understanding throughout this entire process. But it should be a, uh, a seamless, uh, recognizable experience as they've had in the past. While vaccines won't be required for fans to enter ballparks, some parks have jumped into being part of the mass vaccination effort. When the first commercial plane service ferried passengers between St. Petersburg, Florida and Tampa in 1914, the flight itself was exciting enough that people didn't need entertainment. Even after movies, headrest screens and tablets change what we do when we fly, seating arrangements generally have stayed the same. But CNN contributor Chris James explores the new visions for aircraft interiors, though they may not actually take off anytime soon. Hey Carl, I think it's safe to say that this past year has been a game changer for businesses around the world. In the face of COVID-19, the aviation industry especially has been forced to adapt in ways they never before thought possible. So in the spirit of reimagining air travel, today I'm going to give you a glimpse of what the future airplane might look like. The winners of the latest Crystal Cabin Awards were recently announced, recognizing the best of the best designers pushing forward the most innovative and exciting ideas in airplane interiors. On the original award shortlist, this intriguing idea called the Flex Lounge concept, which allows airplane passengers to face one another on a plane. Among this year's winners is the electric jet Alice, which won in the cabin concepts category. It's billed as the first purely electric commuter jet, and it was chosen for its innovative cabin interior, which can transport up to nine passengers over a distance of more than 600 miles. Because of the way seating has been designed, all of the guests will face towards the jet's large windows. Pretty cool. This design is called the Coffee House Cabin, and it was developed by students and faculty from the University of Cincinnati. Described as a productivity-focused zone targeting the business traveler, each and every passenger would have a dedicated workstation and personal space. It also features these space-efficient tables located in the center of the aircraft. Wow. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about takeoff and landing? During those times, the seats will rotate towards the front of the plane and table wings will securely fold down. It's always super exciting to think about the ways in which travel will evolve well into the future. Over the years during the Easter season, we've covered a lot of peeps. Peep portraits, peep collections, peep jousting. Today, we're covering peep art. This is an exhibit at an art museum in Wisconsin. All your peeps are there. The Mona Peepsa, a Supeep Court Justice, peeps peepared with peep P.E. So if you want to do something sweet with someone special, peep on over and give peep a chance. If before you fall asleep, you find that you were counting peep instead of sheep because it's something sweet that in your dreams you savor, bring your appetite to this exhibit. Feast your eyes and try to give it time because you just might find a mine of artificial flavor. Bring your peeps to peep the treat. Who cares if they've never heard of it? It won't be there forever. Well, it might. It's got preservatives. But if you're feeling blue number one and nothing leaves you sugared out, get into your car now, bud. The peeps can help you marshmallow out. Ithaca High School in Ithaca, New York. You guys are... Awesome for subscribing and leaving a comment on our YouTube channel. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.